Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanna to talk to y'all about why I decided to leave the US and move to Haiti. So first, let me give you a little background just so you could better understand my decision. So I was actually born right here in Haiti, um, in Plaisance du Nord, uh, but my family's actually from all over the place. So on my dad's side, his mom is from uh, Tomazo, his dad is from Marchand de Saline, and then on my mom's side, her mom is from Mamlad, and her dad is from Plaisance. I moved to the US with my dad, when I was just five years old or like five and a half years old. And I spent my entire life pretty much in Maryland. So um, yes, the first thing I would say is that I know a lot of people when they leave when they're a kid or when they're teenagers, they pretty much never come back. Or, um, you know, 10, 15 years later, they go back or, you know, as a, an adult, they go back on their own. Um, but that was not my case, y'all. I was consistently in Haiti throughout my entire life. Um, my dad used to take me, when I first moved, we used to go like every two years. And then it got to a point where he couldn't really come with me because of work and I would go on my own. And there was a service um, that American Airlines had, which I kind of think they probably still have it. So if you're a minor, you can just pay an extra fee and there's someone who like accompanies you throughout the entire traveling process. And so they would take me to the gate take me in the airplane once i got to my destination someone else will come and take me off the plane um i will go through immigration baggage claim customs and basically they would just take me to the person who was coming to pick me up if the person was not there i would wait with them until they showed up so um that's how i used to go to haiti as a kid uh, by myself uh throughout my entire life the other thing is that i've always had this love for Haiti, this very deep love for Haiti from the time I was a kid. I don't even really know when it started, how it started, how it came about. I don't know if it was passed down from my dad uh, because my dad absolutely loves Haiti. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I just knew that I always felt this very um, deep love and this connection with Haiti. And every time the plane would land, back in the day we did not have a jetway so there was nothing to connect the plane to the airport they would have to wheel um these stairs to the door and the doors would open and you had to walk down the stairs with your carry-on um and yeah and when the when i stepped outside on those stairs i was hit by this hot wind um, and there's a certain scent that Haiti has. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I'm home. That's how I felt every single time I landed in Haiti. I was just so happy to be here. I just felt like something was just telling me, honey, you're home <laughs> every single time. So um, yeah, that's how I always felt. And then the other thing is that my dad always taught me about Haitian history. From the time I was a kid, you know, he would always tell me all these stories, um, tell me all about the Haitian revolution and all these other things. And I was so grateful for that because I wouldn't have learned any of those things because I was in school in America. So my dad made sure he taught me everything and he was telling me all these stories. And I was just like, what? Like my ancestors did that? My people did that? Like they defeated Napoleon's army? Like I was so empowered by that at a very young age. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be able to do anything. Like I'm being serious with y'all. I was like, wow, what an amazing group of people. What an amazing place. And then the other thing he taught me was all about the things that happened from, you know, gaining independence, from becoming the first independent Black nation to, you know, present time. So all the events, all of the things that happened leading up to it. And I was just like, wow, you know, it gave me a better understanding as to why we were in the position that we were. And that also inspired me to want to do something when I got older. Like as a kid, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is going to be my mission. This is my purpose um, in life is to make some type of contribution to Haiti. As a kid, I said that. And I know um, I used to probably annoy my friends back in like middle school because that was when we were figuring out our purpose and learning about all these things. And I used to always talk about Haiti. I know they're probably like so tired of hearing about Haiti. <laughs> but I knew from a very young age, I was like, at some point in my life, I need to do something to help Haiti in some way, some somehow. But at, at that age, you know, I didn't know anything about, you know, the field of international development and doing this and that. I was thinking like, I'm going to get rich and I'm going to donate a whole bunch of money and do all this stuff. That's, that's what I was thinking as a kid. So I didn't really know 
how <laughs> I would go about doing things. But I just knew that was my purpose in life. Now, let's fast forward a little bit. So, of course, I went to university. Um, I studied business management because I love entrepreneurship. And then I was like, you know what? I need to study something else because I have this other passion. And so that's when I started researching and I learned more about the field of international development. And I was like, okay, this is what I need to do. I need to, you know, apply for grad school and I need to study international development. And um, that is what I did. So I ended up going to American University. Um, I studied international development and my focus was on program management in Haiti. I am so happy I picked American University because during the very first semester, there was this common theme. You know, everyone was saying, don't do development how it's been done in the past. You know, um, we were looking at countries before any international development intervention and where they are now. So we're looking at all the statistics and it, there was really no change or some countries were even worse than before. You know, we looked at all types of things. We looked at, um, you know, different interventions that may have worked in other countries, you know, like the United States and different countries in Europe um, and it worked for them. But, you know, in other countries, um, it didn't work so well. So we were looking at all those things. They were like encouraging us, hey, you know, do development differently. You know, don't just sit in, you know, Washington, D.C. and think, okay, this is what this country needs. This is what development is. This is what's good for, you know, this is what's good for Haiti. And this is what they need to do because that's what development is. Wouldn't wouldn't they want that? Everybody wants that. This is development. This is what it, development looks like. Um, they're like, no, don't do it like that. You know, speak with the people in the community. You know, is this what you want? What do you think development is? What what works for you? What would you like to see? There are a lot of organizations popping up. As I, as you're watching this video right now, there is a group of people meeting to form a, a NGO and they want to do something in such and such country. Let's just take Haiti for example, because there are always people coming in Haiti to do different things. They're like, you know what, we're going to go to this community. We're going to go and give them this because they really need that and things like that without even doing research, without going there, doing focus groups, interviews with the people, collecting data, you know, and then taking that data and analyzing it, you know, without doing any of that, just creating a project without even consulting the people in the community you know that is not the way that they wanted us to do development you know and they really wanted us to see the people as the experts consider them as the experts do it everything with them and include them at every stage of the project and i was like wow that is exactly what i want to do because i think that is how it should be done and i'm like you know what instead of staying in washington dc once I finish school, I am moving to Haiti. I was like, I'm moving. I'm going to Haiti. I'm going to work with the people in Haiti. I'm going to be there. And the thing is, y'all already know, I explained this in the beginning. I love Haiti so much. So it was a no-brainer for me. It wasn't a hard decision. I wasn't spending days thinking about it. I was like, no, this is what I need to do. I need to move. I need to go to Haiti. It's a place that I love anyway. My focus is on program management in Haiti, it was just a no brainer for me. So I was just like, I'm moving, that's it. <laughs> so of course I was excited. I started telling people, I'm like, once I finish, once I graduate, I'm moving to Haiti and things like that. And everybody was like, you're doing what? You're going where? Huh? What are you talking about? I was like, yes, I'm studying international development. My focus is on program management in Haiti. I don't want to do development, how it's been done. I want to go to Haiti. I want to be there and I'm going to move. And, you know, they really had a very negative reaction, y'all. Everybody had pretty much. Um, you know, my dad, of course, was on board. You know, of course, he was giving me a lot of advice. He was really helping me throughout the entire process. And we're, that was a person that I would always call and be like, okay, this is what I'm thinking of doing. This is what I'm thinking and things like that. So he would give me a lot of advice and things like that. So he was on board. Um, and <laughs> But the other adults, the other Haitian adults, um, had a very negative reaction, y'all, to the point where I stopped telling people. Like, if somebody asked me what I was going to do, then I would tell them. 
or if they heard from someone else and i would explain to them but like at some point i was just like i don't really need to talk about what i'm gonna do because i already know i'm gonna do it you know they were mainly concerned about you know something always going on in haiti there's political unrest there's you know crimes and there's this and that and all that and so um you know back in the day y'all so the, i moved to haiti in 2017 so we are having these conversations in 2015 16 and 17 you know not right now so don't think about you know you're hearing about kidnappings and things in port au prince that you know the government isn't doing anything about yes that's happening right now but when i moved in 2017 there was none of that there was none of that i when i moved in 2017 i lived by myself i lived in taba by myself you know and so i was going you know doing everything driving alone all these things by myself comfortably comfortably without any worry so it was a different situation from what it is now okay so what they were basing it off of is what they would see on whatsapp and facebook oh my gosh look at this video look at what happened da, 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 and all these things you know there was crime where i was where i lived you know i lived in maryland and if you turn on your local news right now at any point that you're watching the news you're gonna hear you're gonna hear at some point before you turn it off you're gonna hear something like police are investigating a double homicide on the 54th block of as some point you're gonna hear something about some homicide some robbery some craziness every single day every single day and don't even let me get started on national news national news was was even worse i was just like what is going on like there was just always something going on the same way they would see these whatsapp videos and news and all these things and they'll be like oh something's always going on over there there was always something going on in the states always i wasn't worried about that part because i was always in haiti that was a crazy thing is that a lot of people they would see things on whatsapp and facebook and that was their idea of haiti but i was there like all the time you know i wasn't just in one place i would be moving around if i need to hop on a bus go to gonai by myself i need to go here and go like i was moving around haiti i was in haiti i was i spent 2016 was the summer before i moved i spent the entire summer the entire summer here so it's just like all these things they would see they would be acting like the country was just you know blowing up and it was just in flames or something and i'm just like you know just look at the look at the statistics like analyze it a little better because where you are living where you are living has a lot going on too you know it wasn't like i was in iceland or something where there's like little crime like i was living in the states like come on now you know and the other thing is i wasn't worried about political unrest as much because people want to see a better haiti they want hospitals they want you know better education they want jobs they want certain things so they go out on the streets and they protest and a lot of times the protest starts very peacefully and out of nowhere the police come and there's tear gas and there's rubber bullets and all these things and then the protesters fight back and it becomes kind of you know a little violent and things like that but they start off peacefully protesting and so when those things are on video and they're sending them to you know people in the states and what's up and on facebook and stuff and they're like oh my gosh like look at what's going on but when you really sit back and think about it you're just like they just want a better life so should i not go there because people want a better life and people are protesting and asking for a better life like that is not gonna scare me that's not gonna stop me from going there because at the end of the day that's my mission i want to make some type of positive contribution i want to see another haiti so why would i be scared of that you know why would that stop me from going there every time someone has an opportunity to leave haiti they're gonna leave you know and there's a lot of brain drain a lot of people who are skilled a lot of people who can do so something positive um they are leaving and so what's who's gonna be left like there's there's not gonna be anything left for us so if everyone's leaving and then when someone wants to go back you are just discouraging them it's like you know should we just let haiti go to waste you know like what did our ancestors fight for like our ancestors fought for us to be free and today we are screaming free haiti like isn't there something wrong with that like don't you think there should be some type of intervention and that we should try to do something that we should come together to try to 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 pick haiti back up and yes it is hard there are people who have spent their entire lives fighting for change and fighting for a different Haiti and they haven't seen much you know happen so it is hard 
It is. But if we all just give up, if we all just, you know, um, don't consider it, then what, what are you going to have left? You're not going to have a country to ever come back to. So I say all that to say that no one was going to discourage me from moving. You know, I had a vision. I had a goal. I had a mission. I knew what I wanted. I knew what I wanted to do. And I knew that I could do it. And so I was like, you know what? I'm moving. So I graduated mid-May and ended up moving to Haiti on June 1st, 2017. And I have been here ever since. Um, it has almost been five years now. And I want to share more of my journey with you all. I want to show you what it's like for me to live in Haiti. You know, as someone who pretty much grew up in the States and moved here, you know, my lifestyle and things like that. And, you know, just let me know if you have any questions, what videos you want me to post. And also follow me on Instagram because you'll see more of my life and I have highlights of basically my you know my entire experience <laughs> pretty much ever since I moved you know I've been documenting it on Instagram and so you can go and follow me there and yes I hope to see you in another video bye